Okay, we want to get to an understanding and equation for steady state concentration. And so I said if we give a dose of a medication at time zero, and we know how much a dose is and volume of distribution, we get the concentration over time, it follows first order kinetics to zero. On the other hand, if we give multiple doses, and you can look at this, I give a dose at time zero and I, it starts to fall, and I give another dose and it starts to fall, and I give another dose and it starts to fall, and I give another dose, eventually the dose is going to keep on climbing, but what you see is that eventually, after a, a little bit of time, we get to this steady state average. This it all averages out at this steady state new concentration. And if I'm doing this, I'm giving doses, and then all of a sudden I give this last dose uh, right here, and then I, I forget to give any more doses. This is going to start eliminating just following the first order elimination as it always has. But look what you notice about these two curves. They're like mirror images of each other. I want to talk about what the implications of that are. The first thing I want to do is I want to flip this on its edge, flip it over. And so I've done that. And next I want to rotate it. And so you can see I have flipped this thing over longwise. And so it, it was like this and then I have flipped it so it's like this. I haven't rotated it yet. If I would have rotated it, then it would have looked like that. And so I've got it flipped over. I'm going to rotate it now. So you can see I start, I start right here and I start rotating this way a little bit. I get to here, I rotate a little bit more. I get to here, I rotate a little bit more and I have this curve. Same shape, right? In fact, it superimposes over it. So I can see that my first order elimination is going to also describe my concentration steady state. How did I get this curve? I took my first order elimination, I flipped it, and I spun it 180 degrees. So think of that, what that means mathematically, and you can come up with a lot of different equations. But the main point I want to make is that the pharmacokinetic variables, the same variables that describe elimination, will also describe the approach towards steady state concentration. We've got variables like half-life, volume of distribution, clearance, uh, concentration, steady state. All of these things are also going to describe the approach towards steady state. And let's just review really quick what half-life means. So in this uh, right here, I took and I graphed this all in Excel so you can do the same thing. But I graphed it so that I would have a first order rate law. The half-life would be 20 minutes. K is 0 0.03465. My cl clearance, because my volume of distribution would be 10, my clearance would be 0 0.3465. And the concentration steady state that I calculated from that is 1.8. Now what you see is my half-life 20 minutes. At, half, at my half-life 20 minutes, my, my steady state concentration is 1.8. I come up to a concentration in, to 0 0.9, half of the steady state in one half-life. But I go two half-lives, I get up to about 1.3. And what I'm showing you, first of all, is that the distance my concentration, the amount my concentration changes, goes down by half with each half-life. The second thing I'm showing you is that after I've gone one, two, three, four, after I've gone four half-lives, I am almost at my steady state. After I've gone five half-lives, I am virtually there. And so as a rule of thumb, a shortcut of thumb, is that any time you've went four to five half-lives, you have approached steady state. Now some people will say, oh, you've gotten to 90% after you've reached three point something half-lives. You don't ever have to remember that because you can remember that the natural log of my concentration at some time over my concentration at starting point at, at this time, and I can say whenever a naught is equal to one not you know let's say um, nine tenths or whatever, or in the case that would be that would give me uh, you know a, a point one life you know I could say that my natural log of natural log of one over ten is equal to k times the t of of uh, um, one tenth or the t of ninety percent right so i can say natural log of one tenth divided by k is going to give me the amount you know the time to get ninety percent of the steady state or ninety percent elimination so let me show you what i mean so if the natural log of one tenth the natural log of one tenth is negative two point three oh two five nine the natural log of 
1 half, remember, was negative 0 0.69315. If I took and divided these two, I would see that the, the number would be 3.321928. And so I could say that after about 3.32 half lives, I would have 90% of the concentration steady state, or 90% of, of the drug eliminated, depending on which way I'm looking at. So do you remember the number 3.32 half-lives? No, you just remember that, that it's all first-order rate law, and you can, constant, you can calculate what, what would the time be, or how many half-lives to get to 90%, how many to get to 95, or 82, or 57. You know, it doesn't matter. You just calculate it based on this rate law. And in fact, I can use this rate law to say that after I've gotten to five half-lives, I should have I should have 96.875% of the steady state, or if I'm going the other way, I should have 98.67 or 98 point or 96.875% elimination. So the number would be 96.875%. That's where you are at five half lives. How did I calculate that? Well, I said that at one half life, 0 0.693. If I multiply that times five. I end up getting 3.46574. Now remember these are all negatives, right? So it's negative six, uh, 0 0.693, negative 3.4. So if I take e, e to the negative 3.4, if I take e to this number that I just calculated down here, that is going to equal 0 0.3125. If I take 100% or 1, 1 minus 0 0.0, 0 0.03125, that is going to give me a 0 0.96, 0 0.96875. Now I know my handwriting is horrible here, but 0 0.96875 or 96%. That is the way you do it. Is it simple? You don't have to memorize anything. The only thing you should really memorize is that three to uh, four to five half lives is going to get you close enough to say you're at steady state. And this tells you the percent left if you're looking at elimination. After four half-lives, six percent left. After five half-lives, it would be about three percent left, and so on and so forth. You never have to memorize it. It's not a big deal, but, but it's always, uh, you know, every textbook makes a big deal out of remembering four to five half-lives. I think that's a lot of test questions make a big deal out of that, too. Okay, now we're going to change gears a little bit, and I'm going to ask a question to lead into the next part. So you just finished a consult with a pharmacist. You learned that due to some strange math, you've overdosed one of your patients. You've been uh, getting 25 milligrams, and they should have been getting 10 milligrams. Now, if their volume of distribution is 10 liters, and their clearance is 0.25 per hour, and their bioavailability fraction is 30%, dosing interval is 12 and a half hours, what do you do? So these are all the variables you know, what you have been giving, what you should be giving. I'm asking you to make one adjustment to get everything back to the appropriate steady state concentration. What adjustment do you make? How long will it take? And what is the change in the plasma concentration? So the concentration you have it at now versus the concentration it will be at when you reach the new steady state. Some of the stuff you should already be able to calculate. Some of it I'm going to show you how to calculate it. So you may already know from studying and stuff that the concentration steady state is equal to the dose times the bioavailable fraction divided by the dosing interval. All of these three variables are sometimes combined into, you know, dose some dosing rate, what it might be called, but all three of these variables may already be combined into some dose, and you just divide all of that by the clearance. Okay, so concentration steady state. We're going to talk about how we get to that. So you don't have to memorize the equation. And then, so, but that's going to answer the, um, you know, the part of the question that you, I said, what is the difference? So it's going to answer this question down here. And remember, you can calculate the half-life from all the variables I gave you. Half-life being three and a half hours. And you can say at four half-lives, you're going to be back to normal. But you said, well, you know, we're starting at this concentration. We went up to here, to this one concentration. We're coming back down a little bit. Do we really have to go four half-lives to get back down there? The answer is yes. Anytime there's a change in the steady state, it will take four to five half-lives to get to that new steady state. So you were giving a dose of 25, you got up to some steady state, and now you're supposed to decrease that dose and, and come to this new steady state concentration. 
As long as clearance doesn't change, clearance should be a constant value. It should not be an adjusting variable for the most part. As long as the clearance doesn't change, then you will take four to five half-lives to approach the new con steady state concentration. So you have an intuitive idea of what this steady state is. Let's talk about how we get to it mathematically. Steady state means that whenever I start putting something in, the input mass, the mass that is put in, this, this is the law of the conservation of mass, the mass that is put in, right, is equal to the mass that is eliminated. So we can actually calculate the mass that was put in. It's the dose, the dose that was put in, but we've got to remember that it's, it's only some of that dose is absorbed, so we can multiply it by the bioavailable fraction. So the dose that was given multiplied by that bioavailable fraction times the number of doses. And if we want to know the input, so that's the input, but what if we want to know the input in a given amount of time, the rate of input? The rate of input is going to equal the dose times the fraction times the number of doses over time. And I put this specifically this way because we can use another pharmacologic variable. If we take this, if we're multiplying by a fraction, we can actually divide by the inverse of that fraction, so the inverse time over number of doses time over the number of doses is actually another variable we call the dosing interval. Let me give you an idea of what I mean. So the time over a 24 hour period, I gave somebody three doses. The dosing interval would be 24 over 3 is 8 hours. So I give a dose every 8 hours. That's the dosing interval. So you can just rewrite the equation like this. The um, input rate is equal to the dose times the fraction divided by the dosing interval. But we really only want to know what the total input is, so we can just multiply time to the other side. Remember, we're interested that input equals elimination. So what is the elimination? Remember, the elimination divided by time is equal to the clearance times the plasma concentration at that time. Remember, we said that mass is equal to the concentration times the volume, so plasma concentration, and remember that clearance is volume in a per unit time, for so volume over time. We don't necessarily know what the plasma concentration is, or do we? If we're assuming that we're at a steady state, then the plasma concentration will equal the concentration at the steady state. And then we can just multiply the time over to the other side and we get the elimination. So our idea is that elimination equals input, so we can set this side of the equation equal to this side of the equation. So again, here's my input the dose times the bioavailable fraction times time divided by the dosing interval. Here's the elimination, it's the clearance the, uh, times the concentration steady state times time. When input equals elimination, we are at the steady state, and so we can set these two equal to each other, and you'll see that time's going to cancel out, and you come up with this, uh, this equation right here. This equation, again, is saying that my input is equal to my output. My in, my, what's going in is equal to what's going out. And you know, oh, I can always think this through. I can say, well, how much was I given? I was given this mass. I was given this mass. This fraction of it was absorbed. And I was given it oh, you know, at this amount of time. And I can just divide time by number of doses. I can say this is the number of doses. And then you divide into time to get rid of your time variable. And you end up with your dosing interval. I can say what was eliminated. Well, clearance times concentration is going to give me a mass eliminated. And now I have my new, uh, my new equation that I, have to, I can manipulate to find other important things to solve other problems. So this is the equation. If you have to memorize equations, then this is the equation to memorize. Because you're going to get questions like, what is the concentration steady state? And you can know if I divide over clearance to the other side, that will give me my concentration steady state. Sometimes you're, you're given the question like, you're going to give a, a person, uh, you know, you want to get a person to this specific concentration, what is the dose to give them? And so in that situation, you multiply over the dosing interval times the clearance, you divide by the bioavailable fraction, and you know what dose to give them. Or your question may be, what dosing interval do you use? And see, all of these things are really easy to, to derive once you know this equation where it comes from. You may be, instead of given dose, you may be given something like the, the concentration of the drug 
and you may be given the volume of distribution and so from that you can back calculate into what the dose is and so I want to make a so if you're modeling disease let's look up here and say the elimination the the mass eliminated is equal to the clearance times the concentration steady state times time and if we move time over here we get the elimination rate the elimination rate is equal to the clearance times the concentration steady state and then we have another equation for clearance at this point. So the clearance is equal to the elimination rate divided by the concentration steady state. Now usually that's not super helpful. But if we're modeling a disease, that can be helpful. Because look, what is the elimination rate? If I am talking about, let's say, the elimination rate of drugs by the liver. So we're talking about first pass metabolism. So it's the blood flow to the liver times the concentration of the drug going in minus the concentration of the blood of the drug going out times the blood flow Q is the blood flow and so you can say the blood flow in that in that uh, system time uh, times the concentration of what's going in minus the concentration of what's going out or the change in concentration and so if you know what the elimination rate is and you divide it by concentration steady state that'll tell you the clearance of that organ so the clearance of the liver the clearance of the kidney so the clearance for example I divide it by steady state concentration is going to equal the blood flow times the change in concentration over the uh, the steady state concentration now this is specifically assuming that you're at a steady state concentration. If you're not at a steady state concentration, then you would say that the elimination rate uh, over the concentration at some time is going to equal the blood flow divided by the change in concentration over the input concentration. Now this, or this CA minus CV over CA, this is called the extraction ratio. So this is extraction ratio. Extraction ratio is usually used to model disease or organ specific things. And so I can say the elimination rate is, you know, over the concentration is equal to Q times the extraction ratio, the blood flow in that area times the extraction ratio, and that's also equal to the clearance. Blood flow times extraction ratio. Let me make this very clear. Blood flow times extraction ratio is equal to the clearance. So what I said earlier, I said that if the uh, if the, the kidneys are metabolizing something and only filtration is purely what's clearing it, then the extraction ratio times the blood flow is equal to GFR. If the if the kidney has a way of actively secreting that actively secreting that, then it's going to change the extraction ratio. So I just want to make sure you're, you understand that the GFR, in when you're talking about renal metabolism, GFR is not the only thing that is, that is removing drugs. I just use that as a, a model to help you understand what clearance was. Now I'm going a step further and saying that clearance is equal to the blood flow times the extraction ratio, which is this over here. So what would that look like if it was only GFR? Let's suppose that we had, you know, a, a certain volume going into the kidney and only 20% of that volume, let's say we had one liter going into the kidney and only 20% of that volume, that's the extraction ratio, was filtered, 20% was filtered. So my extraction ratio would be 20%. And so my Q being one liter times 20% tells me what was cleared in that amount of time, namely 200 milliliters. So I hope now you understand the concentration steady state and I hope you also understand the um, clearance of, especially renal clearance completely. Next, we're going to look at uh, clearance by the liver, hepatic clearance.